Jenkins here with the Thunderbirds and with our latest installment of In the Community Conversations. And I'm fortunate to, today to be with Dee Dee Devine, President and CEO of Native American Connection. Dee Dee, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. So first question, just can you tell us a little bit about your organization and, and your role with, with the organization? Sure. Uh, Native American Connections has been in the Valley for almost 50 years. And I'm going on my 41st year of working here. So most of my life, I've, uh, you know, I've served the community here in the Phoenix area. So Native American Connections really was founded around the Native American population that was moving into the Phoenix area and looking for jobs and looking, you know, to go to school and places to work and then maybe found themselves homeless in the Phoenix area. So our organization began to provide affordable housing, connect people to jobs, and then deal with mental health and behavioral health and other health related issues. So that's what we still do 50 years later. We have about a thousand units of housing with about 2,500 people living with us on any given day. We have, we still operate behavioral health services. We have a two residential uh, substance abuse recovery centers. And, uh, and then we're very active in ending homelessness. And we have uh, about 350 units of housing for chronic homeless people and keeping them safe and off the streets and improving their health care and, and helping them uh, live the highest quality of life they can. Gotcha. Can you tell us a little bit how, about how the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has affected the organization and, and your operations? So we are, so Native American Connections is considered an essential service. We have about 170 employees and we're showing up every single day on site because we serve people. And we have about uh, 2,500 people that are in our housing communities. Um, these are people that are very low income and, um, and they're struggling. We are connecting them. Uh, we've assured them. We said two things when COVID started. No one will be evicted and no one will go hungry. So we began really helping our, our residents uh, understand about rental assistance and utility assistance and how they can apply for some of the federal and state and county programs that can help them stay up to date on their rents. And then we really began organizing around getting food distribution out to our communities. Children, of course, m many people know with your children home now, they, you know, the, at, at first the schools were got really active and making sure there were still meals and everything for children, but somehow that's beginning to close now. And so now that our kids are home and we're really making sure that there's enough food for all the children and the families. And then on the substance abuse recovery side, we have residential programs and outpatient programs, and we didn't want anyone that was in our residential program to have to leave and go out in the street. So we've kept our, our treatment centers open and we're sheltering in place, both with our housing residents and our behavioral health residents. We're really creating this sheltered environment where um, we can keep our employees safe, our residents safe and our clients safe. Do you have any recent examples of how you've had to change operations or how people have been coming to you? We have um, sweat lodges at our, our healing centers and um, we operate three sweat lodges a week. Those are very spiritual. They help with healing. They help with purification and letting things go and some of that recovery process. And they're very spiritual ceremonies and we have had to suspend those uh, sweat lodges. You can imagine it's in a very tight environment but we just can't, you know, um, be in proximity to each other. So gotcha. uh, we had to close that down. On the housing side, um, we had a really fun story where you're seeing some of the families where, where a child has a birthday and people will drive by. We actually had uh, some birthdays at one of our housing communities and people came and drove by and then they wrote happy birthday messages in chalk on the sidewalk. And the kids were, you know, in the within the community behind the gate, watching the people drive by and 
you know, cheering happy birthday. And then uh, the kids were making uh, like hopscotch and chalk things that they could do after the, the group had driven by. So that was really nice and uplifting for the children. And, and really that's the purpose of our in the community conversations is really helping uh, the waste management Phoenix o open community connect with our great charity partners. And so can you tell us a little bit more specifically, wh how can we help you? What do you need next time at the grocery store? What do I need to pick up? Yeah. And how pop it off. So we do have a volunteer coordinator. And if you go to our, our website, nativeconnections.org, uh, you can connect with our, our volunteer coordinator. So we have about 1,000 units of housing with about 2,500 people living in our community. They need everything that you need in your home. They need, and anything that's donated to them helps them, you know, take care of their family better, stay stably housed, you know, uh, keep that family together during this tough time. So, you know, they need all the cleaning products that you're buying and hand sanitizer and toilet paper and paper towels and canned goods and food, you know, um, they're not unlike any other household or even your household. So if you're out and about, uh, you know, if you thought of our families and you pick up something extra or you're surprised you found something, it'd be great, you know, for our families. Um, also because our children are home and we could use school supplies, any kind of school supplies, uh, arts and crafts, things that keep the kids busy. Uh, you, you know, if you're coming from a family where you have children, what are your kids doing? That's what our kids want to do too. So thank you so much for that. Well, on behalf of the Thunderbirds and myself, um, you know, congratulations on your 41 plus years of service to our community. Thank you for everything you're doing for our community. And I really appreciate you taking some time to, to discuss Native American connections and, and how we can help you. Well, thank you, Scott, and thank the Thunderbirds. I can't thank you enough for giving us this opportunity to, to tell our story. Thank you. Well, hang in there, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks a lot.